Now, even though we have a map right now of where all the trees are, you might have the question of which neighborhood has the most trees in Athens. So even though this doesn't cover everywhere inside of Athens, maybe you find more data that goes everywhere else. Maybe instead of trees, you're working with another data set. But your question just becomes, I want to count the number of trees in each one of these neighborhoods. That's actually really, really easy. So right now, if we look at our neighborhoods, right click, open attribute table, we only have a few different pieces of information about them. We have their name, but we don't have something like how many trees are inside. It'd be great if we had a new column that had number of trees, right? Let's make it. So this is where geographic analysis comes into play. There are two things you can do with QGIS. Number one is just make pretty maps like this. But number two is actually do an analysis that gives you more information than what you originally had. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something called a spatial join, where we say, look, take these trees that are inside of this shape right here and count how many there are. So how many trees are in each one of these neighborhoods based on the position of these trees and the shape of the neighborhood? We're going to do this by going to Vector, Analysis Tools, Count Points in Polygon. So our polygon is our neighborhood, and our points are each one of our trees. So we say, sure, count points in polygon. Our polygon is going to be our neighborhoods, and our points is going to be our trees. Now, when it counts the number of trees inside of each one of these neighborhoods, it's going to create a new column. The default name of this column is num points. So the number of points in each one of these polygons. It might be nice to call it number of trees, but I'll leave it as the default. So I'm going to click run. It does a little bit of magic. And then we see, oh, there's a new layer there called count. So I'll click close so I can take a look at it. So it doesn't really look any different than our neighborhoods before. It just has a different color. If I want to hide it to look at my original neighborhoods, I just click this. Right now it doesn't seem any different, but if we right click and go to open attribute table, we will see that hiding inside is now a new column called num points, which lists the number of trees that it found in each neighborhood. We don't have trees for every neighborhood, so there are a lot of zeros, but it's better than nothing. What we're going to do now is we're going to say, instead of making every single one of these neighborhoods this brown color, we're going to turn every single neighborhood into a color based on the number of trees inside. This is called a choropleth. So if we want to change the color of this new layer called count, we're going to right click, properties, and then again go to symbology. Last time we wanted to change the visual to match the data, we selected single symbol and did categorized because each one of our trees, we wanted it to be colored based on the category of tree that it was. In this case, though, we're using a number. We're using num points, and we're coloring our shape based on the value in num points, the number of trees. So instead of categorized, we're going to pick graduated. Again, it asks for the column that we're interested in. We use the drop down on the right, and we select num points. It says, yes, change the color. Color ramp is the way that the color slowly changes from one color to another. So very few trees would be this white, and a lot of trees would be this red. I find red to be a little aggressive, so I would like to change this color ramp. I select the drop down here. I have a few options here. The one I like the most, though, 
is select all color ramps, and then this one right here, which stands for yellow, green, blue. We select it, and we see it starts off from a nice gentle yellow and then moves to a darker blue. Now what we want to do is we need to pick the way that these colors transform into the number of trees. We can start by just clicking this classify button here. And so now everything with between zero and about 1300 trees will be this, 1300 to 2600 will be this color, and so on and so forth. If we click apply, we can see the preview down there. What I'd like to do is I'm going to increase the classes a little bit, let's say eight, and in mode, I'm going to select natural breaks jenks, or pretty breaks. Natural breaks jenks is going to select something here that just looks good. It does a little bit of magic behind the scenes to figure out the best way to divide up these colors, but it always looks good. So I recommend anytime you need to pick the way that it divides these categories up, Natural Breaks Jenks is a nice way to get started. So classify and then apply. So we can see that even though our data didn't change, by changing the mode here, we end up with different ways that all of our color is distributed. But I'm telling you, natural brank jenks is a beautiful, beautiful one. So I'm gonna click OK, and then I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So I think that these trees are a little bit distracting now. So we could just get rid of them by clicking this here. And it will show us this neighborhood has the most trees, these neighborhoods over here have fewer trees, and these dark blue, but not very dark blue neighborhoods have a medium amount. Now the problem is that our data is actually kind of weird. If we bring our trees back, we see that even though we have tree data for this neighborhood right here, we only have it for this upper corner here. And this neighborhood right here, it only has a few trees that I think are bleeding over from around it. So is this data perfect? No. But does this look kind of fun? I think so. So what we want to do now, finally, is these trees are a little distracting. Let's make them all black and make them all nice and small. So take our trees layer, right click, properties. We're back to symbology. Before, we were coloring them based on the category, based on the name, but I want to go back to them all being exactly the same. So I'm going to go back to single symbol. And I'm going to say, instead of being this blue color, I'm going to make you dark black. We're still going to leave that opacity there, and let's see how the size looks. I still think those are a little bit big, so I'm going to drop my size down a little bit more. Maybe the opacity up a little bit. Okay, I think this is a pretty good map. So, okay, and now we're looking good.